What's going on, everyone? So about a week and a half ago now, uh, the Utah Jazz had waived the big yurt. Uh, Omir Yurtsevin uh, was waived by the Utah Jazz, and he's available in free agency. Uh, he would be dirt cheap on a vet minimum type of deal. Uh, this is a guy that's 7 feet, you know, 270. So he's got some good size uh, behind him. He's a guy that is definitely a bit of a project. He has shown some flashes. He has shown some nice moments. He's played with the Miami Heat uh, as well as Utah Jazz. His rookie year, he started in 12 games and played uh, 56 total for them, uh, in which he averaged five points and five rebounds in that stretch. And then last year uh, with the Utah Jazz, he played in 48 games total, started 12 of those games, uh, and in that stretch averaged five points uh, and four rebounds, along with, you know, a little bit of playmaking, uh, not like a, a great passer, but, you know, a guy that can, you know, kick it out to the open man, uh, and guy that can play a little defense, right? Again, the jury's still kind of out. He hasn't really gotten a, a real opportunity. Like, even in the first year with Miami, which was the most minutes he's played since coming into the league out of Georgetown, was 12.6 minutes per game. Uh, and then the following year with Miami, he played in just 9.2 um, uh, 9.2 minutes per game. And then in the Utah Jazz uh, tenure last year, he played uh, just 11.4 minutes per game. So basically in 11 minutes, he's given you 5 and 4. All right, so this is a guy that, you know, if you translate that to per 32, right, you're talking about a guy that gets you, you know, 15 and 15. Now, realistically, it's probably not going to happen, but this is a guy that I, I do think has some potential, right? He definitely is somebody that needs to be worked on. It's somebody that needs to needs to be an organization that is willing to kind of take the time to, to really help in his development and growth. And I think that he could potentially be a guy, maybe not even necessarily a starting level guy, but even just a quality rotation piece, even just a backup big um, that can maybe be some verse that add some versatility. Um, also, I mean, look, the San Antonio Spurs currently, they have some flexibility. So after the Harrison Barnes trade, uh, they had to wave a couple guys, did a couple things. So now they have two uh, two-way spots that are open. And they have two uh, roster spots that are open. So, I mean, you could bring in Yurtsevin in either manner, right? You could bring him in on a two-way. You could bring him in on a actual roster spot, kind of give him, you know, a non-guaranteed, and just kind of see what, what your options are, right? The, it's not like the Spurs are strapped with centers at the moment, right? So to, to bring in a guy like Yurtsevin, who slot him alongside Victor Wimanyama, on occasion and just see like what, what does he look like in quality backup minutes? What does he look like alongside Victor? Right? You know, you could slot him in Collins and see how does how does that pairing look, right? And it's just it gives you an opportunity to kind of potentially find that diamond in a rough, right? It's like if you're the Spurs, what what are your options? There's not this like plethora of free agents available. Um, yes, you can maybe do like a you know a salary trade or something, but like why? You 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 got a nice young core. You have you brought in I thought two quality vets in Harrison Barnes and Chris Paul that are going to be able to help grow and develop these guys. And at this point, why not take a flyer on, you know, a, a potential gem? It doesn't hurt, doesn't cost you anything. It's low risk, high reward. You're not contending for an NBA championship right now. Again, is is Yurtsevin the the best option currently? Like, no, I mean you know, you, you, maybe you're looking at one of these young guys in summer league or something, but Yurtsevin just gives you an outlet to, to bring him in and just, he, he is one of those European players. He's Turkish. So, you know, and pop and the, the Spurs organization, like those European guys, like the guys from overseas, like the, you know, the, the, the French players and stuff, because they play basketball the right way, right? They're unselfish. They move the basketball. They're asked and willing to do whatever you're asked or asked of them. And so I just, again, you look at the free agent market, you look at like the potential and it's like, you no, know, Yurtsevin is a little older. Like if he was like 22, you know, it'd probably be more of like a, a no brainer. Like, yeah, bring him in. But, you know, he's 26. He just turned 26 in June, June 19th. So there is this like question of what is his ceiling, 
right? How how high can you get them? But the Spurs have found those diamonds before. The Spurs have done a good job of getting those guys that people kind of write off and don't expect, and then they kind of get into their system and really are able to to just buy in. And I think Yurtsevin has shown a little bit of what you want to see in a player be able to do in the Spurs system. Right? He can he moves pretty well. He can you know get get around the basket, step out slightly, nothing crazy. Right? Again, he's he's he can make the play. He can make the pass. He's got good size and good physicality. He can bang with the big boys if you want him to. Right? He's not this like big you know body in the sense of like a Jokic where Jokic is just so big and wide. But he is a guy that you can throw and, and give the hard foul and play the right way. And you can trust to, to kind of get out there and give you quality minutes. Again, there have been some real like moments for your in that where people are like, man, maybe this guy, maybe you have something there. So to me, if you're the, you're the Spurs, can you kind of draw out that from him? Can you kind of get the best out of Amir and, and really kind of just, have him be a rotation piece. I'm not even saying he has to necessarily be the the starting center alongside Victor. There is this argument to have Victor be the five. I do like that you have the flexibility with Victor, right? Because like if you like, let's say just we'll use like Joel Embiid for example, right? Say he becomes available and he wants to go to the Spurs, right? Like you can easily slot Victor to the four, right? Victor's utilization at, and and versatility at either the four or the five, I just think is incredibly valuable and really allows you to explore the possibility of other centers, right? To where you're not limited to where you're like, ah, man, this guy's just is basically a five and that's it. No, because Victor can stretch the floor and he has shown that ability and him as the, the help side, you know, weak side blind defender would just be ridiculous, <laughs> right? With his length and size and stuff. And and the way he, how much ground he covers because he's so long and his reach and all that, I just think that you, it gives you really good flexibility to where you know you can take a flyer on a Hertzvin and and just see like what what can he bring you? What does he provide? You now if it doesn't work, you you wave him and you let him go like everyone else. You just bring him in. To me, it's a low risk, high reward type move. I I look at Hertzvin as a guy that you know won't cost or break the bank. Now, yes, there's questions, again, him being 26, what is his upside, what is his potential, but he's played quality NBA minutes, you know, not in a, a huge capacity, this isn't a 30-point-a-game guy, but in limited minutes, in actual NBA games, has actually had starts for two teams now, and in those times, has been able to hold his own and, and been solid in those spots, He's a guy that's not going to demand 30 minutes a game. He's not a guy that's going to come in and disrupt what you got going on. He's a guy that just wants to, to play basketball and be on a roster. So to me, I think you it's like, what else are you doing with those slots? Like, what else are you doing with your, your two ways or your roster spots? You're either bringing in a young guy that you like that maybe has some potential, or you're bringing in a, a, a veteran guy that can add to... Harrison Barnes and, and Chris Paul. But you have two open spots, so you could do either or, or both, right? So you could bring in, because it's like, who else? Like, what are you doing? You bring in like a Mark Kel Foltz or something and see if maybe he can kind of light the fire? Sure. But it's like, why not? Like, you can't teach seven feet. And if anybody can really kind of get Yurtsevin to be the guy that he has the potential to be, I think it's Greg Popovich. I think the Spurs system and style of play, I think would benefit him great because of his ability to do a little bit of everything. Again, he's not necessarily elite in one area, because if he was, he probably wouldn't be in the position he's in. But he's a guy that I do think can give you enough in limited minutes, even as like your third big, that you're just playing in spots. And like I said, just getting a look. Put him alongside Victor, see what it looks like. Put him alongside... Um, go and see what it looks like, right? And then make your decision accordingly. Okay, is this a guy that's worth, you know, maybe maybe investing a little time into, or is this a guy that's like, ah, no, nah, he's just, he's not it. Let's let's go a different direction. You ride it out the year and you see. You know, best case scenario is he turns out to be something in a year or two for you, 
And now you got a, a quality rotation piece. You got a quality big man that can come in and step up. Right? Worst case scenario, you, you wave them. <laughs> right? And you, you're looking elsewhere and you're taking a shot with somebody else. To me, it's not even a worst case scenario. To me, it's like it's so low risk, high reward. I think he's worth at least at least an opportunity. Give him at least a shot and see what he can do. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. Ask question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Do you like the idea of bringing in Omir Ertzvin? Uh, do you think that no, like you know, just find somebody else? Like I said, do you want like a Markel Fold, Gary Tran, or something like that? Is there somebody specific that comes to mind that you're like, that's the guy? That's the guy we should bring in one of those roster spots. I'm saying you got two open roster spots, two two way deals. Yeah, ha you have some flexibility there. You have some options there. You can bring you can bring in a guy, and it's just like, are you bringing in a vet, or are you bringing in, you know, or are you working out some like I don't know salary dump trade or something? I, I like, but after the Harrison Barnes acquisition and absorbing him, you're you're kind of thin in that market. So it's like, you know, what like what what are what's the plan? Why not take a flyer on a guy like Omir and just see what he can do, see what he provides? But anyway, again, however, feel whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear. It. So let me know. Down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.